This morning we are continuing our series, our Lenten series from the book of John on the I Am statements of Jesus. We've covered I am the bread of life and I am the light of the world. And today we will look at John 10 where Jesus says both I am the gate and I am the good shepherd. And if you'd like to read ahead for next week, you can read John chapter 15, where Jesus says, I am the vine. In today's passage, we are listening in on a conversation that Jesus has with a crowd, but his comments are mostly aimed at the religious leaders known as the Pharisees. This conversation is a continuation, really, of the conversation that's happening or even more like an argument that's happening in chapter 9 before this with the Pharisees after Jesus heals a blind man on the Sabbath. This is a violation of religious law that these religious leaders, the Pharisees, are convinced proves that Jesus cannot be from God. And chapter 9 ends with Jesus pretty much saying that if the Pharisees can't see that he is, in fact, who he claims to be, that he is from God, and, in fact, represents God, who is his father, they are actually the blind ones. And Jesus moves from that biting comment right into telling them a story, perhaps thinking that if they can't see the truth, maybe they will hear it. If you are here this morning, I would ask you to stand for the reading of God's Word. If you'd like to do that at home, you can do that as well. Otherwise, you can turn and follow along with John 10, starting at verse 1. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all, out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him, because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him, because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech. But the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. The Jews who heard these words were again divided. Many of them said, He is demon-possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said, These are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
One of the most challenging things about this strange time that we are in, this coronavirus outbreak in these past few weeks, is that we have been getting mixed messages and don't always know who to listen to. Should we be taking extreme measures or even more extreme measures than we are now? Or are we overreacting? Is this not any worse than the flu? Or is it worse because we at least have a vaccine for the flu? If we experience symptoms, are we supposed to just stay home or are we supposed to go and get tested? Of course, even the experts have given differing opinions on these topics as we try to navigate something that none of us has experienced before. And it's difficult to know who we should listen to. As Jesus tells this story, the crowd has a similar reaction. Who are they supposed to listen to? The Pharisees or to Jesus? And Jesus tells this story to help us understand his divine identity and purpose, but the crowds are divided about that divine identity and purpose. Why should we listen to him is the question of the hour. They ask a question that Jesus has already shown them the answer to. But since they couldn't see with their eyes, he tries to get them to hear with their ears. Why should we listen to him? He responds, listen to me, I am the good shepherd. Listen to me, my voice will lead you to green pastures. Listen to me, I will lead you away from trouble. Listen to me, I am the gate. Whether you come or go, through me, the path will be to life. Listen to me, I know you by name, just as my Father knows me by name. Listen to me, I am willing to lay down my life to protect you, choosing death to keep you from death. Listen to me, I am the Good Shepherd. The metaphor of sheep and shepherd is a common one in scripture. It would have been familiar to Jesus and familiar to his Jewish listeners that day. And if you watched the video of our Bethany kids uh, that they made earlier, you heard Psalm 23, a prayer that Jesus grew up praying, a reminder that God is our shepherd. Another psalm that kids often memorize is Psalm 100. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And the prophets too use this imagery often. Isaiah says, we all like sheep have gone astray. Sometimes in these metaphors, most often God is the shepherd, and often it is the king of Israel who God has appointed that is referred to as the shepherd in the scriptures. But when these kings of Israel who God intends to uh, shepherd and guide and care for his sheep, when they fail at their divinely appointed job of caring and tending to the sheep, keeping them from scattering, sustaining their lives, and looking out for the lost ones. God says through the prophet Ezekiel, My sheep wandered all over the mountains and on, and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth, and no one searched or looked for them. And then after a word of condemnation for these selfish, would-be shepherd kings, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. Standing in front of the crowd, pleading with those who couldn't see, Jesus asked them to hear. Here I am. I am God among you, searching for my sheep and looking after them. This reference to the name God gives to Moses and God's people, 
I am who I am and I will be who I will be. Who I have been, good shepherd. Who I will be, good shepherd. Who I am, good shepherd. It's an audacious claim to claim that that promise to the prophet Ezekiel that God himself would come and rescue his sheep is happening in front of their eyes. And the crowd says, why should we listen to him? Of course, for some in the crowd, witnessing Jesus healing the blind man was enough to back up these claims of divine identity and purpose. This claim, I am the good shepherd because it also brings to mind another story that Jesus tells about the kingdom of God being like a shepherd with 99 sheep who goes after the one that is lost. What the crowd that day witnessed in the healing of the blind man was the good shepherd rescuing one of his sheep. The blind man is the lost sheep, the lost sheep who could have been any one of them and any one of us. The sheep who could not see, who was in darkness and in need of healing. The sheep ostracized from his community, the community who believed him too broken to belong. This is the sheep that hears Jesus and listens and finds that he is the good shepherd. The blind sheep, this blind man, cannot hear, see Jesus, but he can hear. And he not only hears his voice, but he listens to it. And it is in hearing and listening that he enters into his healing. Jesus spits on the ground and makes some mud with his spit and rubs it on the eyes of this blind or lost sheep and tells him with his good and gentle shepherd voice to go and wash. And this precious sheep listens to the good shepherd's voice, the voice that leads him to the healing waters. And this sheep finds that he is no longer blind, but can see. The crowds and the Pharisees witness the I am the creator of the universe and the one who breathed life into dirt to create human beings, restoring the vision of one of his creation. This is the I am, the eternal one, the good shepherd walking among them, tenderly caring for one of his sheep. Yet they ask, why should we listen to him? When the Pharisees question the blind man about his healing in the chapter before this, they keep pestering him about it. And so the blind man tells them his story over and over of the spit and the mud and the shepherd's words to go to the water and then I was blind and now I see. And they keep drilling him on what happened in order to catch Jesus at fault. Finally, the blind man says to them, I have told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Or if we were to insert the metaphor back into the story, I have told you the goodness of the shepherd already. Do you want to hear of his goodness again so that you can become his sheep too? Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and follow me. There is a simple trust that when the sheep not only hear but listen, it is because they are trusting that that voice that they hear is good. And when the sheep listen, when they respond, the goodness of the shepherd is confirmed as he leads them to pastures of green grass, of abundance and life, to 
the waters of healing and restoration. Hearing and listening. Hearing is receptive and listening is responsive. This combination of hearing and listening are central to the story and central to what we call faith. Those of us who are parents know the difference, right, between hearing and listening. It can be clear that one of my sons has heard me, but unless he does what I've asked, then I know he's not listening to me. We hear the voice of the shepherd and we receive it as good, so good that we listen by responding to it. And then goodness is confirmed beyond our wildest imagination. Why should we listen to him? Because he is good. He is the good shepherd. And if we are like sheep, then we need a shepherd. We need someone to follow, someone who is good and has our goodness in mind. The good shepherd's voice is to be trusted to lead us to an abundance of good. How do we know he is good? Those who hear his voice and listen to him have experienced his goodness. When we trust that he is good, then his goodness is confirmed. Why should we listen to him? Some in the crowd say, how can he not be good? Can an evil person heal the eyes of the blind? And for many of us, that is our story too. How can Jesus not be good? I was blind, but now I see. Jesus foreshadows here in this story where his goodness, his great love for his sheep will lead him, and where his sheep are called to follow him, to the foot of the cross. There the good shepherd will lay down his life for his sheep, and the blind man's story becomes the story of all of us who hear the call to come to the cross and find our way to living waters. At the cross, we hear the one who says, I am the gate. I am the way to eternal and abundant life. At the cross, we hear the one who says, I am the good shepherd. Whoever listens to my voice will be protected from all that seeks to destroy. At the cross, we hear the one who says, I care for my sheep, and as the one shepherd, they will no longer be Jew, nor Greek, male, nor female, slave, nor free, but under my care, they are brought in as one flock. At the cross, we hear the good gift of the one who says, I am the good shepherd, and I lay down my life for my sheep. I know I've spoken in a lot of metaphor, but hopefully the voice of Jesus, our Good Shepherd, has been clear. And I do want to say one more thing before you hit that pause button and go about your day. And that's about this receptive posture of hearing that characterizes the sheep of the Good Shepherd. This receptive posture is still what characterizes us as Jesus followers. Hearing and then listening in obedience is not just an initial posture of following Jesus. We are always the sheep. He is always the good shepherd. This posture of hearing and listening is the pattern of faith for our whole journey of following Jesus, our Good Shepherd. It's a journey of goodness because it's a journey of following the Good Shepherd. So maybe right now, as many of us have more time on our hands, um, not necessarily by choice, of course, maybe this is an invitation to slow down 
and to hear and to practice listening. We can do this in many different ways. We can see and or we can hear the voice of Jesus around us. We can even just practice listening to others so that we're used to this receptive posture. We can read and hear and listen to Jesus' words afresh in the scripture. We can hear and listen to the voice of Jesus in our kids as they run around the house these next few weeks. We can hear and listen to music and let it set our hearts into a posture of praise. To listen and hear more intently to our spouse or a friend over the phone these next few weeks. To hear and listen to sounds of nature as we take a walk or hike. Let's use this time of forced Sabbath, of stopping, of slowing down, to practice listening, to tune our hearts and minds to the voice of Jesus, that we might fully, more fully know his goodness, that even in the face of something as unknown as the coronavirus, which literally comes to us to kill, steal, and destroy, that we might know more deeply the one who leads us to the path of life. We might know the one who is life. We might know and remember that we are known by the Good Shepherd. Amen.